Hey guys, I'm Joanna Barba from the Buzz Adams Morning Show and I'm hanging out at the El Paso Animal Services today with Julie, Michelle, and this is Mia. Uh, tell us a little bit about this outbreak that you guys got here. Did it happen suddenly or? Um, so our, our veterinarian, Dr. Chacon, um, he's been, you know, really reaching out to the community to make sure that everyone knows that distemper is endemic to this region. Um, it's very prevalent in our community, which is why we do so much outreach. Um, El Paso Animal Services does so much outreach. Just last year alone, we vaccinated over 6,000 community-owned pets for distemper and parvo, knowing that this is such a concern for our community that uh, distemper is in our region. And it's across, you know, southern, southern states um, and southern cities as well many shelters that are in the south you know have distemper coming into their shelter um so this isn't this is nothing new uh distemper is nothing new to our community but just recently um our medical team did start seeing an increase of upper respiratory in the shelter so um, we had some shelter medicine experts uh come in and help us start evaluating. They tested a small um, sample size of dogs that were already showing illness. Um, and then as we started getting those test results back last week, um, 68% of that small sample size was about 33 dogs that they tested uh, were positive for distemper. Oh. Um, so distemper is here and in, in the community and you know we do have pets that uh, have been exposed here at the shelter as well. So we implemented emergency operation plan. Um, we are uh, implementing a testing plan to test all of the pets here at the shelter, starting of course with the ones that are displaying illness mm -hmm. um, and then addressing it from there. Um, but uh, emergency operations, we close to non-emergent dog intake um, and Anything that is emergent, you know, the dog is sick, injured, aggressive, posing a danger to themselves or the community, um, we're, we're taking those in. But anyone that's just, you know, found a lost pet in their neighborhood, we're asking the community if they can to please help that pet get reunited with their family. Chances are they're just a few houses oh, down around the love. corner um and just help them get back home with their families get them scanned for a microchip post them on social media if you need supplies we'll provide you with a crate with food whatever you need to help hold on to that animal until they get reunited with their family um we'll vaccinate the dog you know everything that we possibly can just to try and keep them out of the shelter because they're going to be better off in a home than at the shelter right now are there a lot of vaccinations that they need to get before they come here or do you provide that here also? For found pets? Mm -hmm. um, so all pets, um, even before all of this, we always vaccinate all pets on intake for for dogs, distemper, parvo, as well as uh, Bordetella, which is kennel cough, it's common in shelter or boarding facilities. Um, it's like a upper respiratory infection. Um, and then for cats, we also vaccinate them on intake for feline. There's also a feline distemper that's completely unrelated. Um, and other feline diseases as well. So we vaccinate all pets on intake. So of course, if someone finds a lost pet, we'll vaccinate them uh, with those initial vaccines as well. And so somebody finds a lost pet, what is the process to getting them here or maybe getting them elsewhere? How would that, how would someone go about that? Um, so if someone finds a lost pet, um, again, we're asking the community, um, if you can, please, you know, help us get that pet back home. Uh, take the pet to get scanned for a microchip. All vet offices offer microchip scanning for free. There's also free microchip scanning at all fire stations within the city of El Paso. Um, fire stations are open basically virtually 24 seven. So, you know, no matter what time you find the pet, you can take it to get scanned for a microchip there. We have a solar powered microchip scanner over on the east side as well. Um, you know, take that pet, get it scanned for a microchip. Uh, post it on social media, on Nextdoor, Paw Boost. File a found pet report with us so that we can put it up on our pet finder map on our website. Um, hang flyers around your neighborhood. Walk the dog around the neighborhood that you found it. Um, knock on some doors like, hey, do you recognize this dog? Um, chances are you're probably gonna find the family's on, uh, the family of that pet. I'm already seeing it on Nextdoor myself. I just uh -huh. saw one in my neighborhood two dogs that were found, the owners, uh, 
they got the PET scan for a microchip, the owners were found, they were reunited, with no need to come into the shelter. Awesome. Tell us a little bit about uh, how people can volunteer here. Are you accepting volunteers or? Yes, definitely. Yeah, we're always in need of volunteers. So um, the way that you do it is you go to our website, elpasoanimalservices.org. From there, you can create a profile with us and get into our system and take a, a volunteer orientation online. Um, if you don't want to do it online, you all, we also schedule them here at the shelter. So you'd come in here, do our orientation. Typically, we do a walkthrough, but right now with our emergency operations, um, might not be able to do that as much but you still come in and kind of learn about what uh, how to handle dogs how to leash them um, volunteers are really really crucial for us here they help pets get out of their kennel to go on a walks to take a little bit of a break and it's the best part of that dog's day is having somebody come out with them hang out with them show them a little bit of love and it just makes their time here just a little bit easier on them on top of that, for volunteers, you can do other things too. If you're not maybe more of like a, I want to walk a dog kind of person and you're more maybe wanting to help us out with um, calling for fosters, um, kind of reaching out to our fosters as well to get pictures and bios. There's a lot of other ways you can help in like the data entry kind of way. Um, we're also always looking for volunteer photographers. So that's something else that people can do. Um, they can come out, take pictures of dogs. Um, it kind of helps you on your end too. A photographer. Yeah. <laughs> So there's a lot of ways that you can help. Um, so don't feel like, oh, I'm not very active. I don't think I can walk dogs. There's uh -huh. something else. There's something literally anybody for anybody here at El Paso Animal Services if you're wanting to volunteer. You know, there's plenty of uh, pet lovers out in the community that you might not have the physical ability to necessarily walk a dog or might, they might be allergic to pets, but still like be an avid pet lover and want to help in a different way. There's so many other different things that they can do, um, even virtually from their home or something like that, like data entry, like you know, reaching out to fosters, that kind of stuff that they can do from home or here at the shelter if they can't necessarily be around animals or physically handle animals. Awesome. Do you have any planned events for the month of March? We just entered a new month. Are there um, any great events coming up? Well, uh, it's not, uh, we don't have the location yet, but we will be having another vaccine clinic coming up okay. this month. Get, get Again, your get your vaccinated. pet vaccinated. March is National Vaccinate, uh, Pet Vaccination Month. Okay. So, um, you know, still continuing with that effort to get as many pets in the community vaccinated for Marvo and Distemper as, as possible. Um, so we'll be doing that later on this month. We'll be announcing the date and the location as soon as we have that solidified. Um, we're also going to be still doing um, adoption events, uh, offsite adoption events throughout the community. Um, even with the current situation, we do still have plenty of pets that are low risk or we have pets over in our satellite adoption center over in Mission Valley um, okay. that are available for adoption and um, they're healthy, they're ready to go, they're fully vaccinated. Um, so there's still plenty of pets that do need to be fostered or adopted even, you know, in our current emergency operations uh, right now. So if anyone is looking to add a new member to their family, you know, again, visit our website, visit our social media pages to find out where we'll be having those adoption events. Or you can visit us here at the shelter. We're open seven days a week, 11 to six. And then our Mission Valley Adoption Center is open seven days a week, 12 to five. Awesome. Tell us a little bit about your podcast. You have uh, <laughs> all this great equipment here already. Yeah, so what you see here is all um, a setup for our brand new podcast that we started this year. Um, we released the first episode in January. Um, it's called EPAS Unleashed, and it's just a different way to reach out to the community, um, educate the community on various different animal welfare topics, um, talk about different ways that the community can get involved uh, with the shelter, get a behind the scenes of you know meeting some of our staff volunteers that we have here and seeing what life is like here at the shelter. Um, Cause it's not all just petting puppies and kittens all day. There's a lot more to it than that. Um, so it's just, you know, another way to reach out to the community ed educate the community on, you know, animal welfare and pet ownership and all that. Um, so right now we are uh, currently releasing one episode a month um, focused around a different theme. Um, so January was National Train Your Dog Month. We talked with our training and enrichment coordinator, Mason Castillo, 
Um, and he talked about socializing a puppy, adding a new puppy to your Aww. to your home, um, how to train your pet at home, uh, what to look for in a dog trainer, that kind of stuff. Um, last month, February, was National Spay Neuter Awareness Month, so we talked with our veterinarian, Dr. Chacon. Um, on Everybody the loves him. Everyone <laughs> loves him. He is... Uh, definitely has a, a fan base out there so oh, yeah. <laughs> um so we invited him on the podcast and there is a visual version of the podcast oh. so if you want to watch that <laughs> and not just listen it is available on youtube um where he talks about spaying and neutering your pets the importance of it um you know myth and facts around spaying and neutering that kind of stuff and then this month we're going to talk about national uh back, pet vaccination month and Hoping to have a special guest on this month as well. Ooh, how fun. So. Well, this has been great. Thank you so much for all the information. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much.